Hello and welcome to the Three Counties Medical School at the University of Worcester in the UK. My name is Kay Mahana, I'm a General Practitioner and I'm Professor of Medical Education at our new medical school which will be accepting its first students in September 22. I'm delighted to welcome you this morning to um, see some of the features and facilities of our medical school with a hope that maybe you'll consider applying to us in the future. So some of you might not quite know where Worcester is. Maybe you've heard of Worcester Source, but maybe you've not seen the city itself. We're a small rural uh, county town. Uh, the three counties of our title refer to Herefordshire, Worcestershire and Gloucestershire. And as you can see from the map, we're situated in the, in the centre of England, um, in the West Midlands, just butting up against the border with Wales. One of the famous sons of Worcester is um, Edward Elgar, who you'll be aware uh, is a classical composer, composed the Enigma Variations, amongst other things. And Edward Elgar was very fond of the Malvern Hills. And uh, in the left-hand picture here, you can see uh, um, an aerial view of the Malvern Hills, which are within our catchment area and are an area of outstanding natural beauty. Worcester is 40, 45 minutes away from Stratford-upon-Avon, of course, the, the birthplace of William Shakespeare. So we have both natural environments and history. And one element of history is wrapped up in our building here that you can see, the Charles Hastings building. This is the old Worcester Infirmary, been a hospital on this site since the 1770s. And it's named after Charles Hastings, who was a house surgeon at the infirmary and who went on to uh, set up the uh, Provincial Medical and so Surgical Association, which became the British Medical Association. The university has new buildings as well. So the top left there, you can see the Worcester Arena, which is a national centre of excellence in disability sports, opened in 2013 and uh, home of a uh, famous uh, sports teams. Below that you can see the Hive, which is our first ever in Europe uh, university and public community library. On the right is an artist's impression of what uh, the new building, the Health and Wellbeing Centre, will look like, which will be the home of the medical school, um, probably be open in 2023. So Worcester has a strong history of health professions education, and you can see in this list some of the colleagues that you'll be uh, you'll be working with, and whose um, experiences and stories will be integrated into some of our large group teaching, some uh, interprofessional learning. But the medical school itself is new. We've got approval to open from 2022 from the General Medical Council, and. Uh, um, you may be part of that inaugural cohort. Our degree is the same as all medical degrees in the UK. It's approved by the General Medical Council and ours is graduate entry. So the UCAS code is 101 um, and only at the moment are we are admitting students who have got a degree in hand. We're also at the moment only able to admit international students. Now that degree can be any topic. Um, as long as it's a 2-1 or above, or possibly a 2-2 plus a master's degree, uh, the topic doesn't matter. You also need to have the aptitude score um, that crosses our threshold. That can be the UCAT or the GAMSAT or the MCAT test. Um, and uh, probably most of our students are taking either UCAT or GAMSAT. If you reach the sufficient threshold, you'll be invited to interview our interview process, which consists of two panel interviews, plus the CASPA online situational judgment test. Fees are 41,000 a year, and it's a four year course. So what does our curriculum look like? Well, we like to think of it uh, as represented here by this plant pot, well embedded into the National Health Service, into the clinical setting. So the soil that's going to grow our curriculum will be the soil of the NHS. And this seed represents the potential that that clinical setting will enable to flourish. 
The curriculum is a problem based learning curriculum. So right from week one, we start with problems. For example, you might meet Mrs. Patel who has chest pain or uh, Mr. McGregor who sustained an injury um, on his farm or Mrs. Smith who's short of breath. And those cases will form the problems that you'll work to, uh, to unravel throughout each week uh, and ensuring in a structured way that you cover all the curriculum. As you can see here, this is a, a, a small tutorial base. You'll work with maybe eight students for most of the year, guided by an expert problem based learning facilitator who will be a clinician and will very likely be a general practitioner. Along the week, we will introduce you to simulated and standardised patients for teaching. Uh, these are specially trained patients and actors who are happy to be involved in teaching. There will be some teaching in the clinical setting right from the beginning, but also these standardised patients to enable you to practise your clinical skills and your communication skills. We've learned a lot in the last couple of years, haven't we, through the pandemic about asynchronous online learning. We don't have many lectures in our course, but we will have in each week a maximum of five lectures available by podcast, a bit like this now as I'm talking to you. Um, they will be uh, available asynchronously at all times for you to study uh, at your pace. Then we have our resource carousel. Each week we will accumulate artefacts, um, maybe anatomical models, maybe images of health and disease from the clinical setting uh, to enable you to start to put together the anatomy and the physiology of the case of the week. You'll be facilitated in this by expert demonstrators, but again, you'll be working in your small groups for peer to peer teaching. Our teachers will be uh, clinicians of all sorts, multidisciplinary healthcare professionals. They will be experts by lived experience or patients. They will be um, citizens who have a story to tell and who want to be involved in teaching. They could come from anywhere. Your teachers could also include your colleagues and each other. But one thing we are very proud of is that you will have early and frequent clinical exposure to healthcare professionals to help you become the best doctor you can become. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Thank you very much for listening. Um, that's my email address. I'd be delighted to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, please just drop me a line. Thank you.